You've heard the phrase, Rome wasn't built in a day. But in this day and age, it seems like it could have been. We are almost addicted to instant solutions, and we want our lives to be fixed as quickly as we can Google a solution. Yet for the man in today's episode, building something lasting takes time, brick by brick. Let's dive in. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, where we share the gospel of Jesus Christ through the art form of audio drama. Yes, and that includes sound effects. I'm Timothy Gregory, bringing you the story of a man who wanted to build a family, a career, a life. Yet because of his poor decisions, seemed to, well, only tear things down. But we'll see just who could build what he couldn't on today's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. Also, you'll want to stick around because later we're going to give the rest of you an opportunity to enter yet another sweepstakes drawing for a prize. No, it's not a cash prize, but it is a prize, and I think it's a prize that you are really going to like if we draw your name. But first, let's get to it, folks. Part two of the true story of Odell Summer. No, it's a dead end. Stop, or I'll shoot. Get down on the ground. You're under arrest, buddy, and you just added more time to the crime. Last week, we heard how the man in our story turned to alcohol and drugs to deal with unstable parents, how his mother committed suicide, and how his love for an unfaithful woman made him forget a greater love he learned about in jail. This is the conclusion of his testimony, and we'll hear how Odell's summer was unshackled. One after another, I made bad decisions. I survived strict probation only to be arrested again for driving without a license while under the influence of alcohol and fleeing arrest, a felony. I'd been living with Loretta, who was expecting my baby any day. I didn't want to be locked up when he was born. So I stayed away from court when my case came up. After Joshua was born in the early spring of 2001, I rented a little trailer for us an hour from Nashville. Odell, if you quit selling cocaine, how are we gonna live? I'm gonna work in construction with Willie. I don't think there's enough work. He's subcontracting for the government. There's enough. We'll see. I kind of liked it when you sold drugs. We always had enough money to party. And free drugs besides. Yeah, but I was afraid somebody would turn me into the cops. I know they're looking for me. You said changing your name would get them off your trail. I hope so. I can't stand the thought of being separated from Joshua. He was the son I always wanted. The son I'd asked God to give me. And from the moment I held him in my arms at the hospital, I knew he would change my life. Actually, it was a different son that would change my life forever, but I'd forsaken all thoughts of him. Josh was six months old on 9-11 when the towers in New York were destroyed. As I listened to the news, I remembered reading the book of Revelation, and I wondered if the end of the world had come. Driven by fear, I prayed. Oh God, I'm so sorry I turned my back on you. If you're coming back, Lord, would you please forgive me and let me go with you? A government bill to crack Have you followed the news? Yeah, unbelievable. I've been glued to the TV all day. We heard it on the truck radio. It's really horrible. I was afraid I wouldn't be able to leave Nashville and come home. What are those? I bought us some Bibles. We're going to start going to church, Loretta. When Sunday came, Loretta wouldn't go to church with me. So I went alone. But I wasn't ready to commit my life to the Lord. I was just trying to appease him so that I could stay out of hell. My life got better in some ways. I made money, bought tools, and felt like I was going somewhere. But I still smoked pot. Then I became suspicious of a new neighbor in Loretta. But I feared a confrontation because she would leave me and take Josh with her. One day I came home and she had left me for another man. I lay on the bed and wept. Oh, God. 
All I ever wanted was a happy home to raise my son in a normal life the way everyone else does. Lord, I'm willing to give up everything. Loretta, Joshua, my job, everything. You name it, God, but I can't do it myself. I've got to have your help. Somehow I knew that God wanted me to give up my sin, even the marijuana. I would try to let it go bit by bit. Two weeks later, the police chased me down a dead-end street. I tried to run, but they caught me. December 2001, and I'd been running for almost a year. Loretta had moved in with her parents, and I called her from jail. You're in jail? I don't believe it, Odell. You're pulling my leg. It's true. Can you bring me some clothes in the Bible? It really is true. Yes. In a way, I'm... I'm glad it's over. I'm tired of running. Surely they'll let you bail out. No, they're afraid I'll run again. I'll just serve my time and start over with my real name. <laughs> oh, honey. I'm sorry this happened. Don't worry. I'll wait for you. I'll keep things afloat till you get out. Sometimes I couldn't reach her and suspicion flooded my mind, followed by depression. I thought of suicide, but hated to leave a hopeless legacy to my son. With no other option, I opened the Bible and studied the 23rd Psalm. I even wrote it on the wall beside my bed where I could see it every day. God, I know I have a lot of sin in my life, but if you will show me one thing at a time and give me the strength to follow it, this is what I want to do. You read the Bible a lot. I'd like to know the truth about God. You must be getting it, because you changed a lot since you first came in here. Think so? Yeah. You used to cuss like all the other guys. Now you're quiet. I'm trying to memorize Bible verses. Is that why you wrote those words on the wall? I'm trying to understand what God means. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. You think it's possible? It says so. But I've never let God lead me in my entire life. Me neither. Some days I read whole books in the Bible. Some days just parts of a book trying to figure out what it was saying and what it meant to me personally. So that God is holy and I was not. I was on my way to hell, which made me read even more. Christian radio told us to memorize scripture, so I started with James, a book I thought I understood. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. A double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. That's me, Lord. Double-minded. I've gone back and forth, never really trusting you. I tried to make deals with you so I could have my sin. You're saying that my problem isn't just my sin, it's my heart. I'm sinful in the very core of my being. Oh, Lord. I repent for all my sins. Forgive me for doing things my way all my life. Oh, God, give me a new heart and a passion to please you. Put your Holy Spirit in me and give me a new life. I confessed every sin I could remember. And afterward, I felt a sea of peace in spite of the situation. Our cell was one of the worst in that jail. That new guy's meaner than anyone I've ever known. The rest of them are just as bad. They pick fights just for the entertainment. When he took my lunch, I knew I couldn't fight him. I was mad, but if I'd done anything, they all would have jumped me. Wish I knew what to do. The Bible says, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. You got that memorized, but what does it mean? 
God will tell you what to do if you ask. And he won't give you a hard time for asking. So what are you going to do? That guy said he'd take your lunch tomorrow. God will show me. Lord, people say, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But Jesus said, whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. He also said, give to him that asketh thee. Lord, I'm going to trust you for the outcome. Give me your hot dog. Sure. You want the other one too? No. From then on, that man seemed to regret what he did, but no one bothered me. Mom's brother called to inform me that my grandfather was dying of cancer, so I prayed that God would let me share the gospel with him before his death. During the five months I spent in that cell, my weight dropped to 110 pounds. But I finally transferred to the trustee cell where I worked to reduce my sentence. Serving in the kitchen, I ate enough to restore my weight in one month. I was being prepared for battle. Folks, we'll get back to Odell's story in just a moment. But first, I want to share a bit about how our ministry is able to bring hope to people all over the world. Unshackled is now in its 71st year of spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of, well, supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, as you can hear, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we're able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link, if there's one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org. That's unshackledpodcast.org. And then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check, Unshackled. We take checks. You mail that check to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. We thank you for your partnership in our ministry. And now, let's get back to Odell's story. As a trustee in the kitchen crew, some of us were sent to the Senior Citizen Center to cook and wash dishes. This building was right next door to the retirement home where my grandfather lived. For a month, I took lunch to and shared the gospel with him. On a Saturday, a man visited my cellmate. I know you. You sure do, Danny. I worked for you one day when I was down on my luck. Odell Summer. Yeah, it's me. There's something different about you now. You're a Christian, aren't you? Yes. Are you saved too? I sure am. Four months now. I'm learning to follow the Lord. I've been praying for your family for years. Thank you. Please pray for my grandpa too. He's dying of cancer and I've been witnessing to him at the retirement center. God worked it out so you can do that, Odell. I asked God right away to let me tell grandpa about Jesus, but it seemed impossible. All things are possible with God. Amen. When he speaks to my heart, it's, it's like everything stops. I brought some books for you guys to read about great Christians who also has some struggles in life. Danny became my closest brother in Christ, encouraging and discipling us. After almost a year, I was released on parole to live at my dad's house. Loretta and Joshua lived with us, but I was unwilling to have an immoral relationship. So she left, taking our son. I was invited to preach at a small country church once a month, and that prepared me to visit my uncle, who was dying. Odell, I asked the Lord to forgive me for all I've ever done, and here I am, fixing to die. How can I be sure he's forgiven me? Uncle Lou, Jesus told a story about laborers that worked in the field. Some came early and some came later, but they each got the same pay no matter when they started working. That's true of salvation. Some people come to God when they're young, some come later, some come to Him at the very end of their lives. But each gets the same gift of eternal life. 
If you've really trusted in Jesus Christ to save you, then you can be sure he has. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry for the way I treated you when you lived with me, Odell. I prayed about that and forgave you as soon as I got saved, Uncle Lou. As I was leaving his house, I passed a woman I'd known when I was 18 and a drug addict. I spoke to her, but she turned her head, rudely ignoring me. She had good reason. And as I meditated on God's word that night, he spoke to my heart about making restitution. I talked with Danny. So you and her husband, Melvin, got in a fight, and he had you thrown out of a bar one night? Yep. I wanted to get even, so I broke into their house and stole a bunch of small appliances, a, a VCR, microwave, and some radios. How long ago was this? Seven years. The Lord wants me to make things right, Danny. But I don't have the money right now. After I get my finances together, will you go with me to talk to him? Sure. A day or two passed, and the Lord impressed on my mind not to wait. I couldn't pray without the issue filling my thoughts. So I called Danny and we drove to their house. Melvin was sitting on their broken down porch with his son, his son's girlfriend, and their dog. Danny got out of the truck right behind me. Brother, if they whip you, they'll have to whip me too. What do you want? Melvin, I've done you wrong and I want to make it right. Yeah, I know you did. You broke into my house and stole all my stuff. I know, but... Now I want to make it right. I want to repay you whatever you feel like I owe. Oh, you don't owe me nothing. Just get out of here. Leave my house right now. The Lord wants me to make things right with you. I just can't leave it alone. Well, how much do you think you owe me? What do you think it would cost? Well, I don't know. Whatever you feel like I should pay, that's what I'll pay. Ah, never mind. Just get out. I'm a friend of Odell's and it's none of my business, but I have a suggestion that might bring an agreement. Well, go ahead and say it. Looks like you need a new porch here. What if Odell paid to build you another one and me and him come over here and build it? All right. If he wants to do that, he can. We had that porch built by noon on Saturday when they woke up. His wife said she forgave me and we shared the gospel with her. I'd learned a lesson about obedience to God, but I had things to learn about man's laws. I still had no driver's license, and one Saturday, Loretta didn't bring my son to visit as agreed. Every time I called, a little girl answered. Toward the evening, I asked my sister to take me there to get Joshua. When I arrived, Loretta was there. What are you doing here? I came to get Joshua. Today was the day, remember? Well, pack his diaper bag. I called several times today, and a little girl always answered the phone. She sounded kind of young to be babysitting. She's 12, old enough. I think I'll wait till tomorrow to give him to you. No, he's going with me tonight. Odell, no! I'm taking my son with me because you're not taking care of him. She had been drinking. As I turned to go down the steps from the trailer, she reached for him and fell. But she got up and followed me to the truck. When I arrived home, she called. Odell, I'm coming to get Joshua tonight. No, you're not. I'm keeping him. You I called the police before I came to get him, and they told me whatever parent had him in possession was the legal guardian. So I'm not giving him back until a judge tells me to. Uh, you haven't heard the last of this! That began a long and painful custody battle. Her family threatened me. Even my stepmother, who was Loretta's cousin, urged me to give him back to her. But I refused. A few days before Christmas, I was ordered to give him back or be arrested. Hello? Danny, it's Odell. I need some godly counsel. What's wrong, Odell? Loretta went to the state social workers and told them I hit her and took our son. And they gave her legal protection and ordered me to give him back or be arrested. You don't want to get in trouble with the law, Odell. I think you better give him back. But she's drinking and leaving him with all kinds of people, even kids. He's in danger. God tells us to obey man's laws. You have to trust him with the results. Not only did I have to relinquish my son, but the police filed a protection order against me. I was not even allowed to talk to Loretta. At the court hearing, the judge gave Loretta custody. I went home and wept. Lord, I know you control all things. 
Why did you let this happen? My son is in danger. Please save Loretta. Bring her to salvation before something bad happens. Hello? Odell, I've got to talk to you. We aren't supposed to talk, even on the phone. I've got to see you. I'm desperate. <laughs> okay, you can come over. Odell, I was with these friends, driving around, and they left me on the side of the road in the middle of the night, in the rain. I had to walk all the way home, and I got all muddy. <laughs> Loretta, I've been praying for you. And I think the Lord is telling you to repent or something real bad is going to happen to you. I didn't deserve that. They shouldn't have done that to me. The only way you're going to find peace is to give your life to the Lord. Oh, Odell, I need you. You're my best friend. You're my only friend. Loretta, I'm not the answer to your problems. Jesus is. A week later, she was arrested for bank robbery. I pursued full custody of Joshua, an uphill battle. My lawyer strung me along and didn't even file the right papers. But I paid him and found one that helped me. I still had no license to drive, so I rode to work with my dad. But then, God provided a trailer in the country where I could raise my son alone. And then the Lord provided a ride to work with a co-worker. One day, my friend Danny called me. Hello? Odell, it's Danny. How's everything? I got full custody of Josh. Praise the Lord. The trial about the robbery's coming up. Loretta didn't even show up for the custody hearing. I keep praying she'll repent. Oh, so do I. Are well, you still going to Nashville to witness the homeless people? Yes, me and another brother I met in jail. I'll take Josh with me. The Lord's really been working in your life, Odell. Oh, don't I know. He helped me get a job in this great place to live, and then he got me my son, too. I couldn't see how it was going to work out, but he knew. You know the proverb. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. Yep. In, in all thy ways acknowledge him, and, and he shall direct thy paths. Life was very simple. Because I couldn't drive, I went only to work, the grocery store, and church. All my spare time was spent with Josh and reading the Bible. Loretta was sentenced to six years in prison for the robbery. In 2004, Danny invited me and another guy to go with him to a retreat in North Carolina. So what did you think of the retreat? It made me think about some things. That's the idea. Not long ago, I saw a video about how people pray, Lord, use me, and hope the door will open. But that video said we should pray that God will make us usable. He'll put us to work if we're usable. He won't let a good tool rust on the shelf. I've been praying about that even with my past. God can use anybody, Odell. You know that. His strength is made perfect in weakness. <laughs> then I'm the perfect tool. Listen, would you guys like to visit the Bible school I went to in Greenville? We toured the school and I applied to go there. I didn't see how it was possible. Then, miraculously, the state restored my driver's license. And just as miraculously, the school accepted me. Loretta was imprisoned in West Virginia, but despite the long distance, I drove there to let her visit with Joshua. Odell, you always were the best friend I ever had. I'm so glad you came. I want our son to know you, Loretta. I sure wish things were different. They can be with Jesus. Still talking about him, huh? <laughs> he's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. It's hard to believe all the ways he's been helping me and you. I haven't seen any help. The Lord got my license restored more than a year early. That's how I was able to drive up here. Well, I'm glad you did. That's not all. The Lord found me a good apartment in Greenville, and the guy I work for offered to pay the first year's rent. You have the Midas touch. I have the Lord. He tells us not to worry about tomorrow. That's easy to say when things are going your way. Loretta, Jesus is the Son of God. He came to give us life, and life more abundantly. He died for your sins. Why don't you trust him with your soul? I continued to visit Loretta twice a year with Joshua. My church in Greenville, 
helped me with tuition and child care for Joshua, and God provided a part-time job cleaning a laundromat to help pay bills. I finished Bible school and am waiting for the Lord to open doors to missionary service. Through my church, I visited Thailand twice and learned that the Thais have no word in their language for God. I can testify that His name is wonderful. God is love, and we love Him because He first loved us. 1 John chapter 4, verse 10 says, Herein is love, not that we loved God, but that He loved us and sent His Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Listening friend, if you were to die tonight, would you go to this loving God? Or have you condemned yourself to eternal separation from Him? You can change that right now by praying with us. Dear God, I repent of my sins. I want to be saved. I believe Jesus died for my sins. I believe He rose again and lives eternally. Come into my heart and life and help me live for you. Thank you for your gift of salvation. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Friend, saying this prayer isn't the end of it. In fact, it's just the beginning to a life of submission to the Lord and daily dying to yourself and letting God transform you into the person He created you to be. Let us know you are now a child of God and we'll send you some helpful literature. The address? Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Or if you're still in need of counsel, we encourage you to call 1-888-NEED-HIM. Now, we love hearing from our listeners here on the Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast, so send us your questions and we'll answer them here. It can be something you're curious about or just something you want to share with us. All you have to do is write us at podcast at unshackled.org or call and leave us a message at 312-281-1264. We'd love to hear from you. Now, before we get to our sweepstakes drawing info, I just want to remind you to subscribe or like our Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. You can even share it or tell a friend. We'd also love for you to review or rate our podcast, and don't forget to check out our other podcasts on this same platform, Unshackled Daily Devotionals and Unshackled in Person. We appreciate your input and involvement in our ministry. And again, please consider supporting us so we can freely offer quality Christian programming to the world. All right, the prize for this sweepstakes contest is yet another beautiful wooden scripture plaque. The verse on this one is Romans 5, 8. But God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. This specific plaque has dark brown bark and a golden center. The scripture is written in light green color that makes it pop. If you'd like to take a peek at this scripture plaque, you're welcome to visit our podcast website, unshackledpodcast.org, and stop by the audio drama page for a picture. Folks, unfortunately, we are only able to mail this plaque to locations within the United States, so our drawing is limited to U.S. addresses. But if you reside in the U.S., all you have to do to enter our sweepstakes drawing is call 312-281-1264 or email podcast at unshackled.org and give us your name, phone number, and email. That's your name, phone number, and email. The winner of the sweepstake for this beautiful scripture plaque will be announced March 20th, but the deadline for entry is March 4th. We look forward to hearing from you, and next time... Tom, what happened? Derek McGowan happened. What's this? That McGowan boy. He's three years older and eight inches taller, and he's... Ah, quit babying him. You're gonna go back out there and face that boy like a man. Have you ever felt pressured to be someone you weren't? Perhaps you felt as though if only you could change, you'd be accepted and loved. All right, let me see you. I'm fine. It's not my blood. <laughs> 
Glad you're standing up for yourself these days. We'll meet a man who grew up in his father's shadow with no room for his own identity. I used to think I was having a good time drinking. Now I get into fights for no good reason, followed by an awful depression. But then he would encounter his true identity. Tom, salvation is a free gift of God's grace. I found him and then tried to run away. That didn't work either. God takes us where we are. Don't miss this classic true story of Thomas Michael on the next Unshackled. Heard in the true story of Odell Summer Part 2 were Steve Bayorgian, Amanda Markeski, Stephen Spencer, and Mark Forrest. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound effects, Holly Krajewski. Recording engineer, David Pierczynski. Audio engineer, Michael Kahn. Script, Kenitha Gabler. That's it for this week's Unshackled Audio Drama Podcast. So until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory, your brother in Christ.